reasons. One is that, okay, well, it's, it's, is it my pitch to sell you or my pitch in general? No, why, why would I as in just, just to learn? Okay. So you want to differentiate yourself um, like everything else. You want to di differentiate yourself from your colleagues. Uh, there's a variety of motivations. One is personal motivation. I think Tammy said it. Uh, she says that the pursuit of learning is important to her and she would like some sort of litmus test or measure to tell her where she is in that learning. So number one, it's individual. Number two, it's um, uh, for obviously for career purposes. So in other words, um, you say that, okay, well, I've got the following certification. This needs to be recognized. Um, the, the customers are going to say, do you have that certification? And um, they're going to say, okay, well, there's a value to that certification. I want to hire you because, um, well, you've had, you, know, you may have had some experience, but in addition to that experience, you've got the certifications. From a more corporate side, there's a few things. Number one is, how is a customer today supposed to tell, especially at, at the starting point with new grads, um, who is ready to come onto their project if you have no experience? What else do you have? I mean, you, know, you may be a PhD in astrophysics, but you've never worked. So this is one thing that, that ties you back into the SAP community and says to the customer, well, at least they've been evaluated in some form. The next thing is um, there are failed implementations and there are partners out there who some are fantastic and some of them are not putting their best people forward. How is a customer again supposed to tell um, who is going to be on their project team short of reading every single resume and being an absolute expert in SAP themselves and many aren't um, in to evaluate the criteria of the people coming on board. So I think it's very important for them to have something to uh, look at and say, okay, well, there's at least a fair global common denominator that they can evaluate um, using this certification. Molly, do you want to have anything? I'm going to tell you a true story of SAP consultants as this program got relaunched a couple of years ago. Um, Tim, you may have noticed, as you said, that the type of exam was different. So one of the significant changes was we went out to the consultants, both SAP and out into the ecosystem, and said, really tell us what tasks, what do they need to know? To, to have the critical topics when they go into the customer. Um, some of you who ever did the associate old exam, it was just here's the book, here's the task, they all matched. It wasn't really based on, you know, really rank and prioritize what are the tasks that have to be performed, what's the knowledge or what's the experience. So we kind of switched it around and said, okay, you tell us what's the priority. And the tests were built that way. So the list of topics and the types of questions were really built with an attempt to validate required knowledge. And then as this program got rolled out, SAP Consulting did step up and they committed. We're going to have 80% of our people certified by the end of 2009, which was a huge, huge jump because we were at 17% when it started. Right? And so they had 12 months to go from 17 to 80. And as you guys know from a billing standpoint, that's not an easy task. So what we did is we gave them self-study materials and they got organized. So they took their leaders, they took the platinum, the platinum consultants, and they started getting organized and started creating um, reviews around preparing different topics in preparation to be able to take the exam. And lo and behold, what they found out was that as you get out into a project, you tend to focus on certain topics, you tend to become experts in those areas, but you drop back your knowledge on a lot of other areas or a lot of new areas. And what they found was as they went through these review sessions, everybody came back up to a common baseline of knowledge. And, and certification is minimal knowledge. It's not maximum, it's always a minimal knowledge which meant that when they were in a meeting with a customer, they could actually much more readily add value to a conversation that went beyond the scope of their traditional focus point. And they found out that it filled so many gaps and they were so much better represented with the customers. And they, were, they actually saw a reduction in things like modifications, letting third-party software slip in the door because they didn't know SAP could solve that problem. Shocked the heck out of themselves. And now are continuing this, but now we're finding out they're going for their second and third certification, even though it's not required any longer, because they found out it simply got them organized to learn and be best prepared for the customer. And now they're going for 95% certification, kind of all self-inflicted. And it was not what they expected. They hated us when we came forward with this project that said, if we don't lead by example, it's dead in the water. And we clearly weren't leading because we were at 17%. We were just like all the big partners. And they were, they were shocked to find out how it helped them. They decided what was important. They decided what certifications they needed to focus on for their own value to the company. And they just kept moving forward. And it's a, it was an unusual and unexpected success story um, that, that really has got them moving forward again. 